Legends. We've all heard of the horror stories about Craigslist. You know the ones where someone either calls someone to their house in order to sell items for quick cash, or the ones where they go to the person's house to buy something, but instead they're greeted with a horror they will never forget. Well, as embarrassing as it may sound, I am one of those people. It all started when I decided to sell my old car since I had just bought a new one. I had never sold anything before, so I got my mother's boyfriend to help set up the ad since he had sold items on there before. Around 3 a.m. in the morning, the phone rang. Who in the hell could be calling me at this hour? I said to myself, and when I answered it, it was a man saying he was interested in buying my car. As pissed as I was that he was calling at 3 a.m. in the morning, I didn't want to be rude because I really needed to sell the car. And to be honest, he sounded like a nice guy, but he sounded old, old as if he was in his late 70s. So I gave him the address and he said he could drop by the next day around 1 a.m. in the morning. I know what you're thinking. Why would you even consider meeting up with a guy at such a late hour? But he said that he was usually busy during the day and that was the only time that he could come by. So I said yes. The next day, at exactly 1 a.m., a pair of headlights pulled up in my driveway. My wife said she had a bad feeling and thought it looked sketchy. But my wife was known to be paranoid by nature. So I just told her that everything would be okay. Even though honestly, I had a bad feeling as well. But needing to sell my car made me ignore the warning. At first, the man just sat there smoking a cigarette and listening to music. Then I noticed another person sitting in the passenger seat. It was so dark that I couldn't make out what either of them looked like. The car was old and rusted and it reminded me of a getaway car from a movie or something. So I opened the door, walked out, then approached the vehicle. Hey buddy, said the driver in a southern tone. But when I got up to the window, this was not the same old man that I had talked to on the phone. He was much younger. He looked to be in his early 40s. His hair was oily and dirty, and he reeked of cigarettes and Jack Daniels. The person in the passenger seat was a teenage boy that looked to be only 14 or 15. And by judging by his facial features that resembled the drivers, he was most likely his son or some sort of kin to him. He looked nervous and on edge as if he didn't want to be there. So where's the car? He said, his eyes darting to his son and to me. It's in the garage, I said nervously. I regret it even telling him that. Then I heard my front door open as footsteps approached me from behind. Is everything okay? Said my wife, rubbing her hand on my back. Uh, yeah. Why don't you just go back inside, sweetheart? I'll be back in in a few, I said. Then I noticed the driver's eyes scanning my wife up and down in a perverted way. Are you sure? She said. Uh, yeah, I replied. Then she walked back inside. Is that your wife? Said the driver. Yeah, I replied. Boy, are you one lucky son of a bitch. She's hot. How did you bag such a hot piece of tail like that? He said with a deceiving looking smile that gave me the creeps. Are you here for the car or my wife? I asked. I wouldn't mind having both, to be honest, he said in laughter, nudging the kid in the passenger seat with his elbow. I was two seconds away from punching this asshole in the face when he said that. Relax, buddy. I'm just fucking with you, man. Why don't you sound the same 
as the old man that I talked to on the phone. I said, Oh man, that was my grandpa. Why didn't he come with you? I asked. Oh man, he's old. He wasn't feeling well. Look, do you want the cash for your ride or not? I got better things to do than to sit around playing head games. He said, continuing to puff on his cigarette that had an ash that was longer than the cigarette itself. I wanted so bad to tell him that the car wasn't for sale any longer, but instead I walked over to the garage and opened it. He then got out of his car while the boy stayed inside. That's a nice ride you got there, he said as he walked into the garage. And how much did you say you wanted again, he said. Fifteen grand, as it says in the ad. Mind if I take it for a test drive before I buy? I gotta see how this thing works. Not a chance, I said. Either you check it out right here or no deal. What, you don't trust me? Why? Because I'm not up at it up like you and your wife? I know people like you with your fancy cars and your big old house. You probably look down on people like me, huh? And what kind of people is that? I replied. Redneck trailer trash, am I right? I never called you that, I said. But you're thinking it, aren't you? Look, do you want to buy my car or not? I said. Like I said, only if you let me take it for a test drive. I'm not letting you take my car. What if you don't come back? Then why don't you just come with us? He said. I should have said no, but for some reason, I said okay. So I text my wife that I would be back within 20 minutes. But as I expected, she begged for me not to go anywhere with them. But I assured her that everything would be okay. Then the three of us got into the car and took off. I think you might want to strap on that seatbelt, he said. After driving around for about 15 minutes, I told the driver that we should probably head back. All right, but first I need to stop off at the gas station to use the restroom, he said as we pulled into the gas station. I waited out in the car while he and the boy went inside. Then, out of nowhere, I heard a gunshot as both of them came running out, then hopped into the car. What the fuck happened? I yelled, but then I noticed a bag full of money in his lap. He then took the bag and tossed it into the back seat. <sighs> Did you rob that gas station? I yelled in panic, but he just laughed as I yelled for him to slow down. Before I knew it, red and blue lights were flashing behind us. I yelled for him to pull over, but he said, Eh, stop whining like a little bitch. Toughen it up, man, he said as the police ordered for him to pull over. Then, all of a sudden, there was a gunshot as the man's brains splattered all over the windshield. Oh my God, I yelled as the car crashed into a sign up ahead. When the car came to a stop, I looked into the back seat and the boy was holding a gun in his hand. He was the one that shot the man. Come to find out, the boy had been kidnapped since he was eight years old and held captive by his father. The boy was soon reunited with his mother. Even though this story has a happy ending, I decided to never use Craigslist ever again.